Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, constructing an extensible unit test class hierarchy for our application components. Let's get started. I've opened the Greeting Web Services project in the Spring Tool Suite. Open the Maven POM file. As we saw in previous videos in this series, Spring Boot has pre-assembled starter dependencies for various functional groups. Not surprisingly, there's a starter dependency for unit testing. Add the Spring Boot starter test dependency to our project's POM file. This starter dependency bundles JUnit, Makito, Hamcrest, and Spring Framework test libraries into our project. Next, let's start to build out the Java classes to support unit testing. All project test resources reside in the source test directory structure. This provides a clean separation of test resources from the production application resources. In the source test Java directory, create a package named org.example.ws if it's not already created by the project by the Maven archetype generator. In the org example ws package, create a new abstract class named abstract test. The abstract test class will be the base class for all project unit tests. The run with annotation informs Spring which class to use when executing unit tests. The Spring Application Configuration Annotation facilitates the startup of a Spring Boot application for the test runner. Notice that we have supplied the name of the main application class. The test runner will start the application using the main application class just as it would be started normally. At this time, there's not much to include in the body of the class. A logger is declared for use in our test classes. As the project grows and we find that there is logic reused by most or all of our test cases, we can define those methods in this class. Now, let's create some unit tests for the greeting service. Create another new package in source test Java named org.example.ws.service. Within that package, create a new class named greeting service test, which extends the abstract test class that we just created. Annotate the class with transactional. When JUnit test class methods are made transactional, any destructive database operations that they perform within an individual test method are rolled back when the method exits. There are a few other ways to trigger unit tests to roll back, but I find this way to be the simplest. Use the auto-wired annotation to inject an instance of the greeting service into the test class. The before annotation instructs the test runner to execute some logic to prepare for the execution of the test. You may create at most one method with the before annotation in a given test class. The method will be executed prior to each test method in the class. While we do not use it in this test class, the annotation after 
may be used to perform logic after the execution of each unit test method. Let's create the first unit test. Unit test methods are annotated with test. You may have as many test methods in a class as you wish. I find it best to start with a pattern of one unit test class per application class. If I find that I need further specialization of the unit test classes, then I decompose them further. The first test method executes the find all method of the greeting service. Use assert statements to validate the expected results. We expect that the returned collection is not null and that it contains two greeting objects. We expect the two we expect two greeting objects because the project's data.sql script inserts two rows into the greeting table. Let's run the application unit tests. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN clean package and press enter. As a part of the package goal, Maven executes unit tests. Notice in the application logging, the Spring Framework's test context starts a transaction for the test method. Upon completion of the method, the transaction is rolled back. Maven logs the summary results of the unit test to the console. One test was executed with zero failures, errors, and skips. You can also run unit tests in the Spring Tool Suite. Right-click the unit test class and select Run As JUnit Test. In the JUnit view, the results of the unit test are displayed. I have prepared several unit tests for the greeting service, which I will paste into the test class. I'll briefly discuss each test. Remember the project is available on GitHub. See this video's description for the GitHub URL. The test find one method retrieves a greeting using the service's find one method with a primary key value that we know exists. The assertions verify the greeting was retrieved successfully. The test find one not found method verifies the service's find one method returns null when no greeting is found. The test create method attempts to create a greeting entity. The assertions verify that the greeting is created and a primary key assigned. The test create with ID method ensures that the service throws the appropriate exception if a client attempts to create a new greeting with the ID attribute populated. The test update method attempts to update an existing greeting entity. The assertions verify that the entity is updated correctly. The test update not found method ensures that an exception is thrown when attempting to update a greeting that does not exist. The test delete method ensures that the service deletes greeting entities appropriately. Throughout these tests, I have used generic attribute names like service, entity, and list. In a typical application, I have several business services which act as the data access layer for an entity object. 
By naming the test class attributes in a generic way, I can easily clone this class and reuse it for other services. I also want to revisit the setup method. Before each unit test method is invoked, the setup method ensures that the greeting cache has all entries evicted. Even though the unit test runner rolls back the transaction, the rollback occurs after the service method has completed successfully. Since the greeting service method completes successfully, the cache manager updates the state of the cache. Since the order of unit test method invocation is not guaranteed, the cache state must be reset before each test to ensure predictable service method results. Let's run the unit tests once more to see the results of all the greeting service unit tests. Type MVN clean package at the command line again. This time, Maven reports that all eight of the unit tests completed successfully. There will be times when your project has some failing unit tests, but you need Maven to complete successfully to produce the project artifacts for deployment. Simply run the Maven clean package goal with a dash D parameter named skip tests. Notice that this time, the unit tests were not executed. I'll also demonstrate running the greeting service test class in the Spring Tool Suite again. Creating JUnit tests for a Spring Boot application is made easy using starter POM dependencies and Java annotations. Create a unit test class hierarchy to make the most of the reusable logic in your unit test classes. In this video, we focused on creating unit tests for service components. In the next video, we will extend the abstract test class to create RESTful web service controller tests using Spring's mock objects. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the LeanStacks YouTube channel and follow the LeanStacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com.